Okay, that was wonderful. What I'd like to do is to thank you for attending. The question is, what are we going to do tomorrow? What is it that's on your agenda that's going to make a better tomorrow for our children? That's a sobering thought as we take the rest of this weekend and we think about what is it that you can do? What is it that you can do? What is it that you can do? Everybody here, we have to ask that question about our country. Because no longer can we sit here and say somebody else will do it. You're that somebody else. <coughs> we do have those tables to sign up. If you're not in this area, in Pulaski County, there's others. Find a tea party. The movement is strong. I'll give you a little, little insight about the strategic plan. It's not private. It's not that public. But the fact of the matter is, I don't like using analogies about football, but I'm going to use one. You see, they pulled the trigger first. We're on the defense. I don't like playing defense. No. I'm an offense player. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're building our, our grassroots. We're building our numbers. As it stands right now, the politicians are out there building their financial base so that they can raise the money to, to compete against the machines that are already in place. That's their job. This is our job. We're building our grassroots. If we don't have you as numbers in our Tea Party, then we won't be able to convert the defense to the offense. When we pull the offense team on, we need our numbers. We don't need a team that's not fully manned to get up there against a well-defended defense when we go on the offense. So the question has to be, we're not doing this on just the fact that we're doing this, but pick a large tree, that pine tree over there. Look at the base of that pine tree. If we all went over there, it'd be hard to knock it down as we stand right here today. But every time we get together, we have a little ax, and it's sharp, and we hit it. We put a little cut in the base of that big oak, or big pine. It didn't do a lot just then, that little hit. But look how many of you have an ax with that little hit. But even with you, that tree's too big to fall with just our hip. You see the importance of grassroots. You see the importance of who you are today and why we're here. Imagine the fact that as it stands today, we are on a defense because they pulled the trigger first. But imagine the fact that we have a strategic plan of how we're going to convert it to an offense so that when it comes to the day of the decision, if they don't do what we desire, then we will have the numbers to be able to push over on election day your view. I make zero bones about it. I want numbers. I want to have as many people that's committed to liberty, truth, what words were spoken here today and what words you heard <clears throat> and what allegiance you made and what flags you serve under of both the Arkansas flag and the United States flag. I want you to do your civic duty, your citizens duty of being able to say that this country gives us the best experiment of, it, of freedom that this world has ever known and the question remains, is it worth keeping? Yeah. 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 From every corner in this state, we'll take care of our own backyard first. We'll get involved in the local groups. We'll get involved in the state groups. We'll get involved in the national groups. But every one of them matters. And if you're not from this area, and if you are, you have a quorum court. We can talk about how to do strategies to fix that 
We can talk about taxation on the city's areas. We can also talk about the way we're going to deal with the state with all the bills that are going to be presented in our state this year. You see, we are now needing as citizens to be involved in those areas. Leave it not no longer to a politician. For if they choose not to represent us, we will call them over and over again. Do you realize, just a little bit of information, that if you find somebody that represents you and you should know who your JP is, you should know who represents you in the representative's side and the Senate side in your district, and you should have their cell phone number. And if they don't give it to them to you, then tell them that you don't need them. <laughs> And then, when we put out the word that your representative isn't doing their job right, I need about a hundred of you guys to burn their phones and say, what do you think you're doing? Because let me just say this real quick about this. That corner, I believe, is where the governor's office is. And I've been told by representatives who are here and others that are not, that with our term limit, that right there is where all the power is because he's been in this business for over 20 years, running through the ranks, and he's now our governor. He's a very popular governor. I guess popular to the 20,000 or 10,000 jobs he's putting in the government payroll so that you can have your taxes raised to pay for them. I guess he's popular because he spent about half of our savings since he's been in office. Yeah. But you know the sad part is what happens on that office right over there? The sad part about that office right there is term limits. Because he plays a game that basically says that if you're a newbie as a state representative or a senator, and if you don't do what I say, I'm not going to give you grant money for your district so you won't look good, and I'll starve you among, among your people. Yeah. And if, if this is recorded and he finds different, then please respond. But the challenge that I have is this. When he brings those newbies to his office, get this picture. He rustles them in and he has the power of that big office and he comes in and you're a newbie and you're just figuring out the ropes and you only got three terms that you're going to be able to have. So he puts you in there and says, this is the rules. This is how it's going to be. So I guess, I don't know. I haven't shook in my shoes quite a while, but I guess somebody like those newbies would. But then when he walks out, what we need to be able to do with our numbers of our grassroots is this. When he walks out and we got our eyeballs sitting there when they come out and he's just been given the rules of the game and we find out he just had those rules, why can't we have a hundred people call him up and say, here's our rules? Why don't we decide who's got the most fear among those people if that's what they're going to do? If they're going to bow and bend, they're going to bend our way. We're yeah. the people, yeah. not the government. That's why we need you. That's why we need to be organized. That's the understanding of what the game is. In this next election, we need grassroots that is so big that they cannot ignore us. That's right. And, 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 and let me make a comment about the ones that are here today. This is the best part. I'm talking to the leaders. You guys. Imagine if you're on our team. Imagine if you commit to building the grassroots from right here. And imagine when we gather again together and you do your part and you bring the people to the next meetings. Oh, they're going to follow, but you led.